100 years ago, the first piece of coal came up from this mine. It's weird to think that people used to work here day in, day out, every day of the week. Digging for coal without any sunlight, deep below the ground, lungs filled with dust, explosive dangers and the continuous sound of machines. It's been closed for almost 50 years now, and all that remains are just silence and memories. Hey guys, Jill here for Premier Basics, and this was my submission for the Feel My City Sounds competition by Hollyland. It's an online competition where you can win over $50,000 of gear and cash. And since one of the aspects of this video is about sound design, I'm gonna show you guys five different tips to edit your sound design in Premiere Pro, of course. This video is also sponsored by Hollyland, and they provided us with a new Lark 150 to record our sounds for this submission. But without any further ado, let's start recording some sounds and edit them in Premiere Pro. Now the first thing I thought of was the story of my video. There is a place close to our office which is an old mine site, ideal for a video. So we headed there and started recording our video and our sound. Like previously mentioned, Hollyland was kind enough to give us their Lark 150 wireless microphones and they are available in black and white colors. Hollyland also provided us with a lav mic, which is easy to use when you want to record other people. For instance, in an interview, or as we're doing right now, as you can see on my camera right here, Timo is standing all the way in the back, and we're standing in the middle of a metallic um, labyrinth, and everything is still sounding great. So, the wireless function of this microphone is awesome. Hey, Timo. Hey. Okay, so once we're finished shooting our videos and recording the audio, let's drop everything into Premiere Pro. I'm not going to show you the process of the video edit itself, only the sound design. Now a very important first tip is to record as much audio as possible. Sometimes you can fake something. I wanted to have the sound of a pickaxe hitting a rock, but since I don't have a pickaxe, I faked it by hitting a rock against a metal chair, and here at the office, I hit a hammer against some stones outside. Now place the shots where you need it in the timeline. If for some reason you couldn't make the recordings on location, you can always do it at home or in a studio, like I did. Now this can be the case when there is too much background noise on location, or when the reverb is just way too much. The process of recording this later on and faking some audio is called Foley, by the way. Now, if there are still some specific sounds left that I can't generate myself, I will look for them online and download them. And now comes the part where we are going to tweak the sound design. My first tip here is to play around with the pitch. And you can alter this by using the pitch shifter effect, or you can use the rate stretch tool, or R on your keyboard, to make the sound faster or slower. And this will also cause the pitch to shift. Now you will notice that by making this slower or faster, the clip length will extend or shrink, of course. Let's have a listen at a simple whoosh sound at three different speeds. Okay, next tip. Go to the window menu and open up the essential sound panel. Select your sound clip and then from the essential sound panel, select the type of audio. Normally, you would pick SFX for a sound effect, but here's the trick. You don't have to pick the exact sound type. You can be creative and select a complete different one. If you want some equalizer presets, you can pick the dialogue type. Also, the reverb and clarity can be altered from here. Let's have a listen to some differences with all of these presets.
Guys, I know what you're thinking. Tell us more about the competition. Well, it's an online competition from Holy Land, which you can join too. And I'm sure you can even do it better than I did. Just head over to the link down below and head over to their website. What you need to do is make a video from at least 30 seconds about your city. Also make a behind the scenes video about how you shot that video. Upload them both and BAM! You've entered the competition. Now like I mentioned before, we also received the Lark 150 from Holy Land. And honestly, I was surprised with how good it actually was. It has a stable wireless transmission up to 100 meters with less than 5 milliseconds latency. It's also super compact, which is nice for when you're traveling. And it comes inside a charge station, which can be charged with a USB-C cable. The microphone is omnidirectional, but you can also add a lavalier mic to it. You can also add a second Lark 150 to the receiver to record two people at once. So it's actually a really impressive microphone and yes, all of the sound design in my submission video is recorded with this. So you get to hear the real quality as it is. Now if you also want one of these awesome wireless mics then check out the link in the description down below. Now let's head back into Premiere. Okay, my next tip is for when you're using the reverb and it's called the cutoff trick. A great way to get a nice reverb is to place a keyframe on the moment where you want the reverb to start and the sound to end. Now this can be done with the pen tool or P on your keyboard or by holding control while clicking. And next up, set another keyframe and drag it all the way down. Now the sound will stop here, but the reverb will remain in a subtle way. And that's how you get a nice reverb to your sound design. The next tip is about ambient sound. Now let's say that you've shot some footage in a factory like we did. Now you want to get ambient, but in our case, all of the machines were off. So we literally had no noise whatsoever. So we're going to create our complete own ambient sound mix. And think about all of the noises that you can hear in a factory. This can be a machine, steam, levers, buttons, an alarm, maybe people talking, etc. Now play around with the lightness, equalizer, reverb and pitch until they all fit together. Play this through a couple of times until you feel like this sound is exactly what you would hear inside of a factory. And bam, you've created your own ambient sound mix. The last tip is audio panning. No, 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 not with the kitchen tool. A pan is a movement going from left to right or vice versa. You can animate the audio to make the viewer more into the video. Like for instance, when someone walks across the screen from left to right, like I did right here. You can animate the sound of the footsteps going from left to right. But how do we do that? Well, we can go over to the effect controls of our clip and right here on the audio section, we see Panner. Now the balance is the property that indicates whether the audio is left or right or on both sides. Zero means it's on both channels. When we change it to minus 100, it will only be heard from your left side. 100 will be only heard from the right side. So with the use of this stopwatch right here, we can create some keyframes and start an animation of the panning. Simple as that. And that's it guys, I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned a couple of new sound design tricks. Now if you want a chance to win $50,000 of gear, make sure to enter the competition. I'll see you guys next week and as always, stay creative. I'm a pigeon.